so less than two weeks to go now um and uh i am still you know in this like uh 24 style <laughs> eye pressure situation of trying to get a ton of stuff done while my hands don't work so great uh or it's actually not that they don't work great it's that um i can't use them too much or they will stop working great <laughs> so playing it very very safe there uh they have been okay this last week um it's been a pretty light week for pain um i am working half an hour and then 10 minute break usually a bit more than 10 minutes um so it's very kind of choppy day it's it, it's total work time is is not what you would expect from a developer who's releasing a game in two weeks <laughs> uh, it just can't be um i'm using dictation as so i'm doing almost zero typing i think that's a big part of it that i think typing is the main aggravator and dictation sucks um but i have with the best you know plugins and and the best microphones and and the right setup i can just about get by with it for at least for communication with with other people um i always found it difficult to actually do creative writing with it but luckily that part of the project is pretty much over um so uh yeah what i've been working on is is getting the launch trailer ready and the developer commentary um developer commentary is really fun to do it's it's like being interviewed about the game but in like real depth because <laughs> we're, we're drilling into each individual thing uh, i'm not being interviewed i am mostly just talking to myself about my own work um but then we're also doing uh featuring every member of the team so i've interviewed them so i've been like a the host of a little show um <laughs> this last week having calls with with everybody and recording those um editing those together it's going to be quite a big job actually implementing them into the levels because the idea is that that will be in-game developer commentary so once you've turned this on this is a special edition um you will find tape recorders on the level that then play um uh the developer commentary just remembering i need to ask john roberts to make some art for that <laughs> um so yeah it'll be relevant to the level you're in usually um and it'll just be a nice way to do like a second playthrough um yeah it's, it's really nice to like dip, dip back into some of those things it's nice to chat to the team um a lot of them told me things i didn't know about <laughs> the making of the game uh which is it's always fun um trailer much harder job um and much just it wasn't horrible but it, but it was daunting there were times where i'm just like oh god is there a road from from this to a finished thing that's acceptable <laughs> and i went into it with low a low bar to hit really because i, I basically set expectations low for myself of just like this isn't going to be like the one we did in june that was a big production with a, a voice actor and, and a ton of stuff that just took prep and took a lot of organizing. Don't have time for that. Um, it's got to be a bit more informal. And so the tone I'm trying to go for with it is like human. <laughs> like if we can't be slick, let's be human because uh, we are humans. And uh, so it's very much just me talking to you and just being completely sort of honest and upfront about everything um, and trying to just explain a little bit about the game, but also you know, talk about some um, launch stuff we'll be doing um and it's just hard to strike that balance because it can't be like a total rambly dev blog like the stuff i do on the on this channel on on the regular uh I, when i show games um it's very rambly it's there's no script and i'm just doing it off the top of my head and it's fine but uh that is usually 15 to 45 minutes long <laughs> and you can't really do it for a launch trailer i think you can i asked some developer friends and nobody thought it was crazy for me to do like a 12 minute launch trailer um but i kind of talked myself out of it just thinking about like you know picturing the news post popping up on on the major games website and people who haven't heard of the game seeing it who are you know the target audience for a launch trailer really um and see, just seeing the timestamp and being like no thanks <laughs> like you would wouldn't you just be like oh, i'm not watching 15 minutes of this game i've never heard of uh, so for the sake of people who've never heard of the game i do want to keep it short um it's looking at be like two minutes 20 something like that um i'm as of friday we have a draft i'm pretty happy with it's not ready yet there's still some bits to do but it proves that that the concept can work um but yeah i've just been like this is a, a talkative chatty version of, of the of a voiceover by me um so casual but it's not off the top of my head because it's the launch trailer it's important uh, there's a lot to get through and i have to do it in a very short space of time and i don't want to say things in a in a you know confusing way or or talk over myself or, or stammer and things so it, it's it's edited it's it's spliced together from many takes um but it's a hard balance to strike because there are 
I want it to be a little bit funny. There's, there's, I, I sort of make fun of us a little bit in it, of me, I guess. <laughs> um, and doing that, as you, you will know if you've ever watched a video uh, uh, that I've done before, including this one, I guess, uh, uh, I sometimes laugh at myself. I laugh as I make a joke. It's just sort of the, the, a mannerism of mine. Um, and that you can't really fake. <laughs> it's uh, well, at least I can't. I'm not a performer. I can't. Perf I can't. Yeah, I can't perform. I can't convince you that I'm experiencing something for the first time if I'm not. Uh, I can read a script uh, and I can talk off the top of my head, but I can't read a script that has an emotional moment in it and then I guess acting is the word I'm looking for isn't it I can't act <laughs> um, and so there's the, the the intro to the current draft of the trailer is probably going to stick to the final thing because in it I make a joke that wasn't in my script um, uh, just sort of occurred to me in the moment and I made it and made myself laugh and it's, it's like slightly awkward it's not like a very funny joke or anything but it is genuine and I can't re-record that now. Like if I want to keep that in principle, I can't do a second take of it because <laughs> like if I don't actually make myself laugh, then it will be a weird forced laugh and, and uh, that is, is just never going to work. Um, so yeah, writing this kind of tightrope between has to be exactly what I intended to say, but also has to be genuine and off the cuff <laughs> and you can't do entirely uh, both those things. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's working. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to make sure it does it does still read okay if you've never heard of the game and you do need it explained. Um, it's, it's heavier on the side of just watch some continuous gameplay. I'm just playing the game, um, for, you know, completing a whole level uh, as opposed to the last trailer, which is montage, montage, montage. Um, so, which is less slick, but more explanatory. I'm hoping to just cover both bases. You've seen the slick one, now, now here's the one that's, that's a bit more in depth. Um, I... I mostly i am doing okay emotionally <laughs> with things uh i did have a run that where i was getting pretty stressed about the trailer because not because it was going badly but because i had like three work days in a row where it was like okay today i'm working on the trailer i'm gonna make some progress on the trailer because it was this big question mark can this can my plan for it even work when i once i do a draft is it just going to feel horribly awkward and weird um i didn't know that until i until I made it, and that, that takes at least a day to get a draft, uh, kind of two really. Um, and for three days in a row, I was just being like fucking knocked <laughs> this way and that way and that way by urgent things that came out. Like, this thing isn't fucking working. This thing, ah, needs dealing with the fuck. This thing that happened last week actually didn't happen at all, and now it needs to happen this week. Um, just, just absolute uh, urgency. And the, the urgent things in themselves, not that hard to deal with, not, not too stressful in and of themselves, but just that feeling of like, I keep stepping up to the plate and just about to get on top of this task that is, gets more stressful the longer it gets delayed. It's not as time sensitive as the other things, but it is time sensitive. And if every other time sensitive thing takes priority over it, it's gonna become real fucking time sensitive. <laughs> um, so those three days are very stressful because it's just that feeling of, you feel behind, you feel like you're not doing a job, even though I am doing my job and doing the most important part of my job. Um, and yeah, just that uncertainty of like, am I going to get done? Is it, when is this going to happen? Uh, luckily that did calm down and I got to just devote some actual time to it. I, I've been, you know, it, it's just a time period where I got to accept that like some people are going to be waiting on replies from me for quite a while because uh, there are days when there just aren't those gaps to catch up with messages and stuff. It's just, no, sorry, I have to just be working this trailer hundred percent of my working hours because I can only work half an hour at a time. <laughs> and you could, you might think, well, surely in the 10 minute breaks, you can be catching up. No, you can't. Like everything uses your hands. Um, and using my phone in the gaps between using my computer does not help with RSI. That is a, a bad way to go. So it has to be really, really hands off. Um, and that is a tough balance to, to strike. So. Uh, catching up a little bit this weekend. I'm generally not working weekends even now. Um, it's just, it's not about um, work-life balance so much as just <laughs> hands again. Like I think uh, if I don't take days off, then uh, I'm gonna have a flare up and that's gonna cost me more time than, than I gained by, by working in those gaps. Um, I have done a bit, a bit of work today and uh, there might be, I wouldn't mind doing some like dev commentary stuff tomorrow because um, it's mostly talking into a microphone, which I can do without hands. Um, it does require a fair bit of editing. It depends on the subject. Some things I can just talk and, and it comes out okay. Some things are a little bit of a more delicate subject and I need to rephrase and, and edit and stuff. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's also not a great environment for it here. I'd rather do that in, in the office because there's a, an air conditioned office that I share with Brace Yourself Games uh, where I can seal myself in a room and have both quiet and cool, which I have not had this week. I have to do trailer stuff from home for various reasons. And my office, uh, I have to like shut the door, get the air conditioner on, and I have a portable air conditioner that can do like at best one small enclosed room. <laughs> um, and I have to like charge it up with cold air and then turn off the air conditioner, shut the window, put on the mic, start recording. Cause that's the only, that's the only environment that's quiet enough. But the longer you leave it like that, the hotter you get. It's just very hot at the moment. Um, and yeah, for trailer stuff, I had to do that. For the developer commentary, I can do that in the office. So I should, probably should do that. Um, and maybe just, just disconnect a bit, a bit better. Um, but yeah, it's, it, the, the workload doesn't look too scary, really. There's just a lot of moving parts that aren't resolved, you know? There's, there's the soundtrack, which is um, sort of a placeholder version of it. It exists, but it's not quite showing up how it should in Steam. And I'm trying to talk to Valve about that, um, uh, you know, getting that resolved, and it isn't resolved yet. So just, just all these little question marks hanging around of like, is that going to get resolved? Is this going to get resolved? Um, there's a, there's quite a few parts to the DLC, um, none of which exist in a fully finished form. So all of those need kind of finishing at the same time as I'm finishing the trailer. And I also need to write some kind of post to announce the game coming out. <laughs> um, and I know that, you know, this next week is the last full week. Um, I'm actually recording this on, on Saturday. And so I've got a full week. Um, and then the week after is launch week. So it will launch on Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, so really three working days that week. Um, and I just think those three days are going to be a write-off. I think I'm going to be just putting out fires and, and coordinating and rushing around. So I guess I've got to finish making the trailer and all of the special edition stuff all next week, <laughs> which is a little bit scary. Um, but most of it is quite scalable, you know? Like right now, the launch trailer starts with a montage that we already used in a trailer two years ago. Uh, I plan to replace that. Uh, there's a whole spectrum of how good of a job I could do of replacing that. And right at the bottom of that spectrum is, I don't replace it. <laughs> we just used the one we used two years ago because honestly, who remembers? Like, <laughs> um, So yeah, uh, same with developer commentary. Like, I have a plan for how many, all the different things I would like to get in there. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world if not all of them were in at launch. We really just need you know, a good run of it. Um, uh, I expect that it will be complete by launch, but you know, just in case uh, anything does prove to be overly time consuming there, there, there's a way to scale that back if I have to. Um, yeah, just jumping between all these different tasks um, and uh, getting, getting to a point where you just know how much work is left, that's the hard part. Like if you don't, if you haven't sort of felt out the task and, and like started en enough of it then you don't really know how much how long the rest of it's going to take and, and at this point kind of need to start counting the hours <laughs> um we are starting to get at the, you know the game went out to review as a while back i think that was the subject of my last video um and uh for a while that just feels like a black hole you send it out to like so many people and you just get nothing back <laughs> there is a part of it that's like does anyone give a shit is it just like is it just gone um uh, but slowly we've been sort of piecing together you know, various things went weird about that mail out but um, uh, I think now I know the status of the game with all of the major press outlets anyway much less uh, so on the influencer side like I don't have a handle on, on who is going to cover it and, and, uh, and stuff like that I also don't really know how big it is with influencers to be covering it like on to have something up for launch day with press it's it, you know the review embargo date is the date that you want to have a review up and if you don't have one up by then you may review it but but generally um i, I would imagine everyone who has the opportunity to get a review up for the embargo date uh, and intends to review the game will have it up then uh, will aim to get it up by then um whereas with influencers like if we don't get covered at launch by some of them i think it seems like there's a higher chance that they would cover it later because it's less of a news kind of, you know, region. <laughs> what the fuck am I trying to say? I'm struggling with words lately. My, that, my brain is fried. Short-term memory is awful right now. And I'm just like blanking on things all the time. Um, uh, but yes, what I was trying to say is that influencers uh, are less worried about 
being timely with things than press it's or at least in terms of like being on the day kind of stuff uh, it's a not very important point that <laughs> i've struggled to make um yeah so we are finally starting to get responses from the, from those people and some of them are you know just excited we don't, we don't have any reviews back we don't know what people think of the, the game itself oh the guardian did a piece on it which is very nice um that's a, it was very exciting that's that's one of those ones where like people outside of games know what that is <laughs> and uh, know that it means something to be covered by the guardian um and the opening sentence um my mum made the same mistake I did when I read it, which is um, the opening sentence is something like, you know, the year's not even over, but the best game title may already have been decided, uh, Tactical Breach Wizards. Um, and I, uh, at first, just read the word title as meaning game, like the best, the best game's already been decided. I was like, wow, that's strong. Uh, have they actually uh, played it? <laughs> um, it's an interview mainly um, with me. Uh, and then I realized, no, they're saying literally title is the best title, which is, makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, and you know, either is, is very flattering um, uh, and very nice to, to hear. And, and honestly, doesn't hurt us if a few other people make that misunderstanding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see it uh, registering with, with some people. I'm starting to, to not feel like we just threw it out into a black hole. <laughs> and also you have to remind yourself that like press and influences at launch isn't the whole ball game um i have friends um uh, i think of one friend in particular who runs a, a very successful indie company they just don't even send their games to press or I, they have some influences they they send to but it's not a, a sort of key part of their um of their strategy and uh, their launches are insane <laughs> so uh it's not it's not do or die um but i think i think i always feel you know i i was press um I still care a lot about our review scores. I really want to, to get critical acclaim. It matters to me. Um, and I also think just for the kinds, the scale we're at, the kinds of games we make, like they do kind of need buzz. Um, you want, I feel like our, our route to success is we make a good thing and then reputable people see that it is good and, and spread the word that it is good and people believe them because they're reputable people <laughs> like um that feels like our, our our road to success because uh we're reasonably confident we can make good things um i'm not that confident about our ability to sort of market it we don't have like you know like a money hose game that just sells infinite copies every day that you can like then leverage those infinite people to to, to buy your next thing um our games are successful but they're not games that people play every day for the rest of their lives um so the sort of leveraging power of those previous games is is a bit less obviously it's still great to have two successful games out and uh, uh and to have those people you know interested in our stuff and to have a reputation is is really nice um but uh yeah it's not necessarily enough and i uh, probably haven't done the best job of leveraging that stuff there's more we could be doing we can't really update gunpoint anymore it'd be nice to update gunpoint to have sort of like a little badge or something saying hey we've got a new game out uh, but it's not um, it's not in Game Maker anymore. We had to convert it way back when to get it to run on Mac and Linux. Um, so it's in someone else's engine now, and I can't really touch it. There's, there's, it's not impossible if I really needed to like change something, um, but it's a huge production and, and expensive. Um, so we can't do like little frivolous updates. We can with e-signature, so I should look into that, but then I'm launching the game in less than two weeks, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get to do that before that point. But there's just so much I could be doing that I just... Uh, you can't really think about it past a certain point it's just like no we're we're a tiny team we are trying to get a game out and we've got to just do the the vital things and make sure we just do a good job of, of all of those things just just hit all the normal uh, points um i was we we're talking about price with somebody uh, recently and and um uh trying to figure out like should the game be 20 i think the game should be 20 dollars um but am i am i missing a trick by like not charging $25 for it and then doing a 20% launch discount so that it is $20, but that $20 seems like a much better deal than if it was just $20 in the first place. And I had to stop myself and be like, no, look, we put all our creative juice and, and talent into making a really good game. And the game is interesting and it's unusual and it's, it, it's, it does things differently. Uh, the way we sell the game should be as straightforward as possible. <laughs> let's just do the normal ass thing. Let's not, let's not risk blowing it up with some weird fucking uh technique or, or strategy uh let's just sell the game in the normal standard way and and steam is is you know 
has this very well established um, things that you should do. Like they don't give you very specific advice, but but a launch discount is something most people do. And I'm, let's just do a launch discount. And it's just going to be ten percent, and it's going to be for one week, and that's a normal thing to do. And we're going to charge twenty dollars because we think it's worth. We think twenty dollars is, <coughs> is a good deal for it. I, I always want to charge a bit less than people expect and a bit less than than you know we could uh, charge for it uh, because I want people to have that feeling of damn that was a good deal like uh, you know if you play something and you think yes that was worth $25 you don't necessarily go yelling about it whereas if you play something that was worth $25 and it, you, know, you only paid 20 for it you're like damn that was really good I'm gonna tell people about this um, so I think it's like not commercially stupid to do that and also just I like I'm just happier if people are happier with our stuff like I you know I'd much rather be on that side of the line where people are like damn this might be a bit cheap for what you've given me uh, than people saying, damn, that might be a bit expensive for what I got. <laughs>